<laughs> Wanna know how and why I spit roasted and ate 2020? Keep watching! Let's face it, 2020 has been, well, the most important thing is, it's been. And as I film this, it is thankfully almost gone. So I thought it would be nice to mark the occasion and do something special to celebrate. So I asked a few of my maker friends to come up with creative ways to say goodbye and good bloody riddance to 2020. In total, I teamed up with Becca Stern, Ian Charnas, Natasha from Techno Chic, Dana Nicole from 8 Bits in a Bite, and Clarissa from Make It and Fake It, and they came up with some pretty wild stuff. We've got big things on fire, small things on fire, wool, felt, tomatoes, razor blades. But that's not this video. If you haven't already seen our amazing compilation of everyone's creations, go watch it now. I'll wait. There's a link. There, all there. You can go on. Are you back? Okay, cool. This video is about my part of the compilation where I made microbit powered remote control rotating cheese. Obviously. So when we first started talking about the project, we all had some pretty strong feelings about the year and the working title, the code name of the project was Burn 2020. Naturally, that inspired some fiery ideas. Let's kill it with fire. But in a small flat in London with two cats, big flames were kind of infeasible for me. So I started brainstorming other ways you can burn stuff. And I thought of dinner. And once I was on the topic of food, my brain did what it does best and made it cheesy. So I figured I would carve 2020 out of cheese, spit roast it over a barbecue and eat it. And for that, I needed some specific cheese. Science time! Have you noticed how some cheeses melt really well and others just don't melt at all? That's weird, right? They're all made of milk. So why are they so different? I'm so glad you asked. There are many factors that affect the meltability of your cheese. These include fat content and water content. But the thing that sets apart cheeses that melt from cheeses that completely don't is something a bit different. To make cheese, you take your favourite milk, cheers Daisy, you heat it up and you add something to curdle it to separate the lumpy cheesy curds from the liquidy whey. Now, in most cases, the thing that you add is rennet, an enzyme you can find in cow's stomachs, although you can make it other ways. And this causes the casein molecules in the milk to bind together, held by calcium atoms. Now, when you heat the cheese up, the calcium dissolves and the molecules come apart again. And that's what melting is. But for the special few cheeses, we use acid instead of rennet. And in this case, the calcium doesn't get involved the casein molecules just bind to each other. Then, when you heat those cheeses up, there's no calcium to dissolve, and the bonds between the molecules just get tighter and force out water and prevent melting from happening. Two commonly available cheeses made this way are halloumi and paneer. Through some delicious experimentation, I found out that paneer is easier to carve and skewer. So that was the cheese sorted. Next, how to make it spin. A bog standard motor might seem like an obvious choice, but even the tiny ones spin at like 2000 RPM, which is not only unnecessary, but possibly counterproductive if I shake the cheese apart, however funny that would be. So I figured that a more sensible choice would be a continuous rotation micro servo. With these little guys, you can easily control the speed from your favourite microcontroller while feeding them power from elsewhere. Plus, they spin at a much more sensible rate. But I needed a way to attach the skewer to the servo. 
and to have a kind of cheese quick release so I could easily take it off when it was done. Enter Doris, the 3D printer. Yay! I quickly modelled some parts in SketchUp. One that would slot onto the skewer and another that would slip over the servo arm. Then came a whole bunch of failed designs. My first thought was having a kind of hook and eye situation. So the end of the skewer would slip through a loop in the servo part and they'd rotate like this. But there was a little bit too much play between the parts so it was easy for the skewer to slip out. I did find an alternative use for this design, however. Of the, of the new, newly designed cat hat placer. No, Magna, you're ruining it. You're ruining it, look. Go on, Maze. Oh, nearly. Some more prototyping might be needed here. Yeah. Done. Yay. Design two was like a simplified screw. Fins on the skewer part would fit into grooves on the servo part and they'd twist to lock into place. It took a few iterations to get the tolerances right and have them fit perfectly. And even then, vibrations often caused the two bits to come apart. Third time lucky. Next, I tried using magnets. One set into the servo part and one set into the skewer part. And that seemed to work. Mostly. But. Ah, we've got many problems. I suspect it would have been even better if I'd been able to set the magnets at the centre, but that would have meant making the pieces thicker, taking longer to print, etc. And this seemed to work. All that was left was to remote control it. And for that, I used a micro bit. I feel a certain affinity to Microbit because, like me, they are small yet powerful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, whatever. Let's take a look at the code. It's super simple. It uses one of these magic blocks from the devices menu, which you can find under advanced and then under extensions. And it lets you communicate with a phone that's paired with the Microbit. Connect the servo signal wire to pin zero then connect some batteries to your servo's power and ground, then connect those grounds to the micro bit ground. The servo right block here makes the motor spin when it receives the signal from the phone. And we've got a countdown happening on the screen at the same time. I'll be honest, it works better with the Apple app, which has a few extra features and the pairing is more reliable than the Android version. Um, but that's, that's it. That's the basic thing done. Yay! As a final flourish, I added a back panel, which was just a piece of 3mm hardboard, sprayed silver, drilled a few holes in it and threaded through some EL wire to spell out the words goodbye in, and then made a teeny tiny little shelf for the micro bits so that the countdown timer on the screen could complete the look. Putting it all together, it looked something like this. <laughs> I had so much fun making this and eating it and it was a real treat to work with such excellent makers and see the excellent projects they came up with. All of their channels and information is in the description box and their videos about their respective parts should be in a playlist with this video. So. Let me know in the comments how you plan on saying goodbye to 2020 and see you in the new year. Why do I wave like that? Nobody waves like that. <laughs> that was quite good. I did the whole thing. Where I made micro bit controlled, remote control, powered what? No, <laughs> that's not what I did. <laughs> Cause that doesn't make any sense. That's not a thing. Um, that was an unnecessary amount of jazz hands.
No amount of jazz hands is an unnecessary amount of jazz hands. <laughs>